It's recording. We start streaming. Yes, please. Break a leg. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. This is yeah. Angelo Sir Lopez and I'm an ICF MCC coach in the MCC supervisor. And uh, I'm here today with Agenia Tsigu, who's an uh, ACC going for, the, for her PCC. Pretty soon. That's right. And uh, Eleni Carizzi is our, who will be coordinating this uh, webinar series. And we're going to talk about the worst and best cases scenarios in relation to the ICF digital exam. Eva, hello and welcome. Would you like to share a little bit about uh, what is this we're doing? Here. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a, a great opportunity to uh, uh, put in practice some of the learning that uh, and the reading that has been going on and is ongoing in our practice as a coach. I have my ACC credentials and I'm planning to take the PCC exam, uh, which um, I but I understand is different from what I, I I lived and experienced a few years back. Um, so oh, I yes, look forward. It has changed a lot. That's it true. Has, Emma. Yeah, and I've been kind of following different uh, um, videos and, and on the ICF site and the information they're giving on you know what's how to best prepare for this exam. I yeah, think how does that how does that feel for you? Well, I think some of it was very helpful. However, I, I'm I learned by by doing. I learned by by uh, uh, test and error. You know, uh, trial and error. Sorry, that's the word. Yep. And um, this is an opportunity for us to exchange. And and thanks for preparing these scenarios uh, for us to to go into into some depth around you know the best and the worst okay um so in in some of the research uh, that i've done over the studies it's it's challenging it's a challenging um uh, at technique of testing so i look forward to this i'm also looking forward to that a lot of things are changing and we're trying to keep up with people who want with people who are uh, appreciate professional coaching and uh, want to become professional at the higher standards, and since there is no one single way of being prepared for the digital exam, this is one avenue that we are offering now, and mm -hmm. uh, and um, we we'll, we are committed to continue doing that through this webinar series. So one thing I'd like to point out we, before we jump on the, the cases and the scenarios and uh, talk about and have the dialogue with that uh, is that um, to be prepared that we will gradually make the scenarios that we will be offering and discussing here more complex because we, we believe that um, the complexity should be built gradually so that uh, the learning will be uh, smooth and efficient. Yes, yes. Um, yes, I look forward to that. Uh, today's uh, uh, session, let's say, that we're having together uh, and conversation is is a simple scenarios um, that uh, we, we discussed, uh, which are still, you know, offer some challenges and and um, uh, food for thought and food for uh, going into maybe deeper on the core competencies and and you know the whole what does it mean being a coach an effective coach so uh, let's start I'm looking forward to it so how about let's kick it off so Helen would you like to serve us the first scenario yes and let me share my screen Hold on. Now I can only share a window. Hold on just a second. 
Can you see it? Yes. Yes, yes. we can. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first scenario. A client confides in you about a personal ethical dilemma they are facing at work. They are torn between loyalty to their employer and their personal values. Uh, the first response, it's important to always prioritize your employer's interests. Uh, second response, you should follow your guts and do whatever feels right. Third response, let's explore the options available to you and consider the potential consequences of each. And fourth response, I'll help you develop a plan to address the situation without compromising your ethical principles. So we want the best case scenario first, I suppose. Yeah, that's what yeah, we're looking we'll, for. <laughs> yeah, we try to find out which is the best and which is the uh, worst. Uh, so how about, Eva, how about starting with the best case? Um, as I was reading those, uh, you know, my, uh, my process was to separate the two worst that I thought are worse and, and the two best. Okay, mm -hmm. possibilities. Okay, so in this particular scenario, uh, talking about ethical practice, uh, it's very important to keep in mind what does the core competency says about ethical practice. Um, we have to stay within, you know, ICF code of ethics that we all, I think we need, uh, everyone needs to uh, to know it very well. And when you're in a situation where you have an ethical dilemma, uh, and let's let me take response one, and and that my thinking behind that. Uh, it's important to always prioritize your employees' interests. Now, mm -hmm. as a coach, that statement is not coaching for me. It's um, it's 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 telling. It's uh, you're telling uh, the the client, you know, uh, what is best for them, and it's it's not at all client centered. So I eliminate yes, I agree. that one. Uh, if if a coach uh, uses their response number uh, A, uh, that means that the coach is suggesting, advising, and telling. As exactly. you said, uh, actually, it's like they're making the judgment. Exactly. And try exactly. to impose it on their client. Yes. Yes. So um, it, it's more of a counseling. <laughs> you know, it's like giving them, you know, advice. So for me, that, that's uh, out. I would say that that's a no. B, you should follow your gut and do what feels right. Now here too, I find that it's um, also uh, directing, leading, telling, telling the client what you know he should be doing. It, it's not coaching. It's not. It's not giving room for the client to to develop his own thinking around this particular uh, yeah. dilemma. You know, I think this is uh, a little bit of a trap because yes. it sounds like uh, mm. the, the the coach is making uh, space for the client to discover uh, what is important for them. Uh, but the way that this, this response is phrased, you True. should, is not as bad as the first one, but still it's about telling the client uh what they should do according to them and again i think that goes back to uh, what's the difference um between coaching and other modalities it's about asking and not telling yes and that's something that we should always remember you know? mm -hmm. Our it's role true. Is to ask. yeah yeah and um uh, we're there for the client. They're on the spot. They're they're the center. That's why it's called client centered. So, you know, um, that's an opinion. Uh, you should follow your gut and do what feels right. It's your opinion as a coach, and that's not your job. Okay. So um, I would scratch that one off. 
Okay, now see, let's explore the options available to you. Can I can and, I can I can I stop sure. you there a little bit, Eva? Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, we have seen the two two bad cases: response A and response. B, but I think the worst of these two is A. A. Do you agree with that? I would put A as worse. Yes, definitely. Yes, I think we have a winner here. This is the worst this case. Is... <laughs> There's no, you don't bet on that one. That's out. <laughs> yeah. Um... So now the way that we are working on it, I think it looks pretty clear that uh, the best answer will come from the last two, response C and response D. Exactly. So let's yeah. have a look again and see uh, which one is is better. Yeah, this is uh, okay. Let's look at C. Let let's explore the options available to you and consider potential consequences of each. Okay. Mm hmm. And okay, this is a possible right. Let's say intervention. Mm hmm. And. Uh, but there's there's something missing here, okay? What is missing? I think that what's what's missing is it, the client has not really talked about you know um, what he wants to do. It, it's like we're offering. Uh, uh, we're suggesting here, we're suggesting um, what to do. Let's explore options. In, in and, my and view. Cons and consider the possible consequences of each. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's suggesting a, tech, a tool, okay, or, which it's yeah, not inviting. It's, it's not inviting. It's like, it's more suggestive. Yes. Can I, can well, I say a few yeah. things more here? I think uh, this is well a much better answer than the first two ones. Absolutely. Uh, and the coach here is not suggesting um, what the client should decide. So it's not directive in the content of their decisions, but it is uh, in the in the process they will work together. And I think what's most important here is to remember that, and uh, this is in reference to the to the competencies and the uh, markers and the bars that uh, the the coach here fails to partner with the client to co-design the process through which uh, the the coaching will take place. Mm -hmm. So the the partner. So so it's not a very bad answer, but doesn't look like it's the ideal answer as well, either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the the partnership is not there for me. I mean, as I was reading it, okay. Yes. Um. Now, number D, but yeah, you. This is this is where it's tricky. You know, I mean, one could could go with C with you know. Quite easily, but if you if you look at D and think go into depth with in in terms of you know what's what's behind it, um, I'll help you develop a plan to address the situation without compromising your ethical principles. Here, I think you're recognizing as a coach the the issue that has been brought up by your client. He has his ethical principles and his values um, are being you know, compromised here. So here, I think it's, it's more of um, let's work together and I'm here to support you in order to address the situation in the, in the way that you would be comfortable to and not compromise your, your ethical principles. So you're, you're kind of um as a coach you are acknowledging the 
the seri- the issue that's there for the client, and you're also partnering with them to address it in a way that would be beneficial for his uh, for the outcome that he wants. Mm-hmm. So this is your choice. That would be Can my choice. Happen? That'll be your choice. So let me share what's my opinion on that. So is this a good choice? Well, yes. Is this the best answer from what from the ones we choosing from the ones we have? Well, yes, it's the best answer. Is this the correct answer? Personally speaking, no, that's not the correct answer. Uh, I like some elements mm-hmm. of this, uh, but I don't like other elements. For example, what I like is that, well, look here, as we said, we are gradually uh, starting from simpler cases. You know, these are, this is just a two line scenario. And right. Uh, right. gradually in the process of this webinar series, we'll go into much uh, ex- more uh, lengthier scenarios. Well, uh, one thing that I would like to point out here is to to have to have a glimpse of what's the strategy, what's the architect of how you should look, how you should read uh, and decide. It's uh, what is the, if any, what are the keywords in the scenario? There's uh, the ethical dilemma. Is this being addressed with this response? Yes, actually it's the first and only one who is making a point and addressing what's the main issue. What's the main issue? What is the real problem struggle of the client in each scenario? Is a way to look and decode what mm. we're reading when we're reading the scenario. So I think this is about the yes, the ethical dilemma. It's the, the client has been torn up uh, between um, loyalty to their employer and their personal values. Obviously, there's a clash of values and yes. The client is experiencing that and um, you need to make a decision that will help them uh, go forward. So is the coach directive? No, he's not directive. He will be um, helping. I don't like the word help and I'll tell you later why. Um, I had an issue with that too, Angelos, <laughs> in, yeah. in my choice. I have an issue with that too, of course. And the the reason for the issue is that it 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 it, it, it implies that the coach is in a higher position. Yeah, he knows and best. He's yeah. in a position of power mm-hmm. and can help the other, and the other one is helpless. This is not good. This is usually not working, uh, mm-hmm. imposing that uh, the client is weak and need help. We as support would be a much better work, uh, much better word. I'll support you develop a plan. But anyway, mm-hmm. as I said earlier, this is not the. I would not say this is the correct answer, but it is the best of the between the ones that are available here. So develop a plan to address the situation, of course, because the client needs to address this situation, this challenge, mm-hmm. this. A personal ethical dilemma and without compromising your ethical principles. So that shows understanding, empathizing, and um, with understanding what, what the client is experiencing. Yes, right? Yeah, he quit, quit struggling with. Yeah. Yes. So okay. overall, I would go with that as the best as the best answer between the one between the ones that are being given here. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I hope this. This is. Uh, do you want to add anything to this scenario before we move on to the next? Um, no. It, uh, I. I think we're. we're it sounds to me we're aligned in terms of my. You know my thinking behind. You know, uh, analyzing each answer. And and you know what our role is as a coach. Oh, now that's a good one. That's I like this one. <laughs> OK, uh, so second scenario, a client is struggling with feelings of self-doubt and inadequacy. They believe they are not capable of achieving their goals. 
First response, you need to have more confidence in yourself. Second response, let's explore the origins of these self-doubts and work on overcoming them. Third response, it's okay to feel unsure sometimes. Everyone experiences self-doubt. And fourth response, I believe in you. You have the potential to achieve great things. So best and worst case scenario. Right, right. Okay. Oh dear God. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, we have the same thing. Let you me, need let me to have some... more confidence in yourself. You fool. <laughs> How does that sound? Okay. Okay. What is, yeah, you know, when you think of embodies a coaching mindset, for me, it means to you know, be curious, flexible, client centered, the customer is on the spotlight continuous development of the coach so that you know um, the coach has a high level of self-awareness so in this particular scenario you know, struggling with feeling self-doubt number one you need to have more confidence in yourself Hell no, I'm sorry. I, you know, I as a coach would never say that. No, it's not only suggestive, it, but it's also it, it's it's like um, being a teacher. You're teaching. You're right. you're you're counseling here. You're you know, you're telling them what to. It's it's a no for coaching. It's I, I not think a coaching. It also passes the judgment. I, yes, absolutely. Yes. You're you're broken. You don't have confidence. Exactly. I I need. I'm here to fix you. So and you know that's yeah. So um, that's not where we want. The process is not the client. Is not the coaching process. Exactly. So for me, that's immediately a no. B. Let's explore the origins of these self doubts and work on overcoming them. Now that to me is more of a supportive. Um, you know, acknowledging the the clients, um, you know, uh, challenges in terms of uh, his self doubts, and uh, and offering you know possibilities of looking at how he can work through them. Okay, so yeah. for me, that's 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 a good answer. I think that's that sounds right good answer. for me, if if I may share. I think that that sounds good. Uh, that sounds pretty good for me because uh, invite it, uh, the cl the coach is inviting the client. That's right. To explore what is the feeling behind the feeling, or what is the thought behind the thought, or whether there's a, some kind of uh, dysfunctioning or limiting belief beliefs uh, there that are informing these self doubts. Uh, mm -hmm. So that will create some kind of insight that they then can transform into actions, uh, and as as it w says here, work on overcoming them. So I feel this is this is pretty good. So if there's if we won't find any better response in the process, uh, I would vote for that. Yeah, I would. I would. For me, that that would be the best. Um, it's okay to feel unsure. Sometimes everyone experiences self-doubt. Let me tell you <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, like let me tell you, I have so much experience. I've seen so much in my yeah. I, it, no, I to me that's an answer uh, from a position of um, knowing, of knowing, <laughs> knowing, and I think that a coach should not exhibit that. It, it's it doesn't show any curiosity so it, it um, doesn't show any flexibility in terms of solutions it it's very direct it's it's very you know leading uh, I agree it's putting the client inside the box and yeah. since we are uh, working with uh, competency number two embodies the coaching mindset that doesn't show that the client believes in the client's ability to change. So exactly. it's okay to feel unsure sometimes, like mm, you will feel unsure sometimes forever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
We're not and... going to touch that <laughs> because it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, because it's not. So. It, it, yeah. It's not developmental. It it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, bring the client uh, uh, into any forward thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, it it uh, it kind of pats him in the back, saying, "Okay, you know," and that's not our role. Our role is to challenge. Our, our role is to ask. Uh, and 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 ask and the the language we use is very important. I think sometimes, you know, um, because one could read that and say, okay, but that's a supportive type of you know statement, right? Like you're 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 there for your you're supporting them, and and um, feeling that he's or she um, it, it, it is not. Uh, again, broken, but yeah. again, the sub, you know, that's, that's the feeling that one gets when you see that. it's the, okay, there's something wrong, but it's okay. Cause everybody else has that too. You know, <laughs> it feels like, uh, above what you said is that the, the, the coach has a deep seated belief that, mm -hmm. uh, you can't have it all in life. Right. Start yeah. asking for less, man. <laughs> what are that, you doing in your life? So, so for me, that's that's uh, no. Um, now, yeah. D, uh, I believe in you. You have the potential to achieve great things. Uh, Cheerleading. That's good. It, I mean, okay. Um, it's cheerleading, yes, it's, um, okay, um, like, how does he, how do you know that he has the potential to achieve great things? I mean, that's you, you know, saying it as a coach. Yeah. I mean, it, it has, it, in coaching, it, it's the client's awareness that has to, it's, through the relationship, the coaching relationship, we bring out and we help, you know, we kind of catalyze uh, the client to to find the greatness in him or her. Yeah, I, I think um, I think this is not exactly coaching. No, it sounds like I mean, this is uh, OK, uh, somehow empathizing. It shows that they're more like cheerleading than uh, coaching. They don't help the client move and develop. Yeah. So this sounds more like friendship rather than coaching. Yeah. Like, I believe in you. You have the potential to achieve great things. Yeah, but as a coach, you need to provide some kind of so the client will be able to move from where they are to where they need to go. Yeah. So Next. Like okay, not it's, bad, it's, but very it's bad. It's very supportive. Coaching. Yeah, very supportive. It's supportive, but It'll on not the other be my hand, enemy, but doesn't help me. But exactly. But you know what? What does it offer me to move one step ahead yeah. from where I want, where where I am now? Yeah. It, so, it, so that's not. If coaching someone said me. that to me, I would want that person as a friend. But right. I would want a different one as a coach. Right. I agree. So to sum it up, Eva, what are we having here? Which is the best answer? OK, the best answer for me is exploring the origins of self-doubt and work on overcoming them. I agree. Um, that's it's, you know, it's, it's a solution focused also, you know, uh, uh, answer. Uh, it sounds position. like cognitive behavioral coaching as well. Yes, exactly. You you could there are tools that one can use there too to achieve okay. that. Yeah. Um, no, you need to be more confident in yourself. No, I mean to me that's the worst. Yeah, I would frown upon that. That's or where I would. Do. That's what I would say. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm not paying you. <laughs> You're not going to see me again. 
I'm not here for okay, that. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> okay I, I'm happy to see we're kind of aligned here. Okay. Yeah, me too. I would like to to uh, see people's comments down uh, on uh, and uh, perhaps likes and comments and yeah. maybe subscribe to the channel to get notifications about our next live streams and our videos in this uh, webinar series. Great. Um, yes, I would, like, I would like that too, of course. Yeah. So we'd like to keep it this video short, uh, this uh, live stream short, uh, to help you think more about that and reflect that. And until the next one, uh, be a slightly better coach. Why not? That's the objective. That's what we're here for, is to be better coaches. Okay, so see you at the next one. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to our next session. Look forward to it too. Eleni, thank you for your help and support. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Okay, see you. See you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.